This is lesson 1-3, which is solving equations with a variable on both sides. Our essential question is how do you create equations with a variable on both sides and use them to solve problems? So our first example is what is the value of x in the equation shown? So we are going to start with distributing. So I'm going to distribute the negative 2, and then I'm also going to combine like terms. So I'm going to use different colors here. So let's use red. So I want to show I have a 3x and a 4x on this side of the equation that I can combine. So that becomes 7x minus 10 on the left. And then on the right, I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to take the negative 2 times x gives me negative 2x negative 2 times a negative 4. So be careful and look at the sign in front of the number. So a negative 2 times a negative 4 becomes a positive 8, and then plus 9. So now I'm going to go back and use a different color again. Let's use blue for constants. So over here I have an 8 and a 9, and I can combine those because they're on the same side of the equation. So that's going to be 7x minus 10 equals negative 2x plus 17. And now it becomes, I have variables on both sides and I have constants on both sides. So I want to start with the x's. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I do the opposite, add 2x. So because it was a negative 2x, that's why I did the opposite and added. So that gives me 9x minus 10 equals 17. Now I'm going to add 10, doing the opposite inverse. So then I have 9x equals 27. And my last step is I need to get rid of the 9, so I'm going to divide both sides by 9, and I get x equals 3. So we've done problems like this before. This is an example of where you have one solution. So you'll notice I got one single answer for x at the end, so that's one solution. And the reason I'm talking about that is because in our next example, you're going to see situations where I have more than one solution or maybe no solutions. So if I get a value for x, so I got that x was 3, that means that there's one solution. Okay, so here's my next example. Okay. So this one's a two-parter. So example two. So we're going to start with distributing the two, just like we did on the last one. So then I have 4x plus 6 equals 4x plus 6. So now right at this point, you probably notice, hey, this is kind of weird. We have the same thing on both sides of the equation. So it's kind of a tip that this is going to be a weird problem. So then we would normally get rid of the x's, get them all to one side. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, and that cancels, and so does that. So I'm left with 6 equals 6. So if your x's drop out because you have the same value on both sides, then you look at what numbers you're left with. If it's a true statement, so 6 does equal 6, so that is true. That means this is going to be infinite solutions. So you could see this written many different ways. It might be said infinite solutions. It might be said all real numbers. What it means is that I could pick any number I want for x and plug it in, and this equation would work. So it means that any number, I could plug 3 in for x. I could plug 5 in for x. I could plug negative 10 in for x. They would all work. So that's what it means by infinite solutions or all real numbers for solutions, okay? So the second part of example two is this one. So again, we're going to start by distributing. So this side stays 6x minus 5. This one is 6x plus 8. So on this one, you will notice that they both have 6x's on either side, but the numbers are different. So if we start by subtracting 6x, like we normally would, then those cancel, and I'm left with negative 5 equals 8. 
we know that that is false. Negative 5 does not equal 8, so therefore this is a no solution. So if all your x's drop out and it's a false statement, like saying two numbers that are not the same equal each other, that means it's no solution. Okay? So the last one we're going to do here is a word problem. So it says Cameron pays 95 cents per song with his current music service. A new music download service charges 89 cents per song with a $12 joining fee. Should Cameron switch to the new service? Okay, so basically we want to kind of find out when are these two things going to be equal, his current plan and the new plan. So we know that his current plan is 95 cents per song. So we're going to put an X with that. And there's no joining fee with his current plan. Then the other plan is 89 cents per song. So we put that with an X plus the $12 to join. So what we want to do is we want to figure out how many songs that are going to make these two situations equal to each other. So I'm going to get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 0.89x from both sides. So that's going to give me 0.06x equals 12. And then we're going to divide by 0.06. So 12 divided by 0 0.06 gives me 200. So that means that if Cameron downloads 200 songs, the two accounts would be the same, it would cost in the same amount. So what we want to figure out is how many songs, it says should Cameron switch to the new service. So if it's more than 200 songs, it means that his the new plan is going to be cheaper. If it's less than 200 songs, the old plan is going to be cheaper. So we can say he should switch if he plans on downloading greater than 200 songs. So it depends on how many songs he needs for which plan is going to be better. Okay, so that is lesson 1-3. Let me know if you have any questions.